As we continue our discussion about different career paths in the international field, joining me today is Daniel Pullen. He's the Dean of the Price College of Business at the University of Oklahoma. Thank you for joining us, Dean Pullen. Oh, thank you, Dean Grillat. So let's start talking about what international business really means. Uh, before we even get into the career path itself, what does that mean? Does it mean working for private enterprise that maybe works around the globe, across borders? Or what should we think of when we think of international business? Well, today, um, in many respects, international business may have just one word too many as a descriptor. Really, you could shorten it to business because I think essentially all business is international. Certainly, there's the conception of companies working across borders, uh, you know, building elaborate international supply chains, moving goods and services, talent and information, cash flows from border to border. There's, there's that, that brand of international business. But in many respects, even if you are a, a wholly owned, wholly contained operation that sources goods from, say, a state like Oklahoma, uh, markets goods to people like Oklahomans using Oklahoma labor, um, it's still very international because in every respect, whatever that product, good, or service may be, uh, in, 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 in each case, it competes against alternatives, substitutes, competing products, goods, and services that will be subjected to an international supply chain, international talent. And so perhaps it is a, uh, you know, a, maybe a, a piece of corn grown in, uh, in a particular state. Well, that corn has to be of a nature and quality that, it can, that can compete effectively uh, versus corn that may be imported abroad. Um, and so even if it's, uh, you know, the product of one particular geography, the business has to be able to be responsive and competitive internationally. So in that case then, if somebody is interested in a career in international business, what would they want to study? So it sounds to me like they should, they should definitely be studying something in the business field in order to understand international business, if we're not going to think about it in the international sense, but just as business. I mean, what are some of the things that they should study and understand? Yeah, well, um, there's a variety of, of, of skill sets as well as life experiences that go into being able to, uh, to have an effective international business career. Uh, certainly um, having an appreciation for other cultures, um, per, whether that is firsthand, perhaps through study abroad programs, or whether it is um, working very hard um, in, in our classrooms and actually leveraging technology that allows the world to come to you and, and you to, to go to the world without having to perhaps travel or incur those expenses, being very aggressive, very, being very eager to, to learn about the broader world um, and how it impacts where you are and where you want to go is, is, is essential. Um, certainly time-honored um, notions of having um, language skills, if there's a particular geography in which you want to work, or perhaps one that you want to, uh, to, to sell to, the, to, to end consumers in. Um, having appreciation for how business is conducted in those environments while never, uh, while appreciating the differences, uh, making sure that you are still very grounded in your, in, your, in your own value system, recognizing that the way business may be conducted in other countries it could, be, could be different and the practices could be challenged in many respects, but making sure that you stay very true to, your, to yourself. Um, and, and, and also being very open-minded, um, you know, recognizing that you don't have all the answers and that you can't necessarily project your uh, instinctive views on a, on, a, on a place, on a people, on a marketplace. You can't view yourself as the referenceable customer. So being very open to other ideas and perspectives, understanding what that end customer might, might really want or the context in which they would, uh, they would interpret your your good value uh, or, or service, um, and being willing to, uh, to engage uh, people in, in whatever your target environment is in the, in the value creating process and um, in and, and, and sort of the ultimate delivery of, of your uh, good or service. 
So global awareness, clearly, foreign languages and international experience of some sort, but just open-mindedness and other types of, of personal characteristics, perhaps, that would be helpful. But what about communication skills or other types of, of things, being able to write well or speak publicly? Um, are these also important things that one might need in order to have a successful career in business? Oh, absolutely. Whether it is um, it is speaking publicly or writing well in a in a different in a different language, or it's just being able to articulate a position or a purpose, um, even in your in your native language, um, to a, a company that may even be located in your in your home country. Still, the basic building blocks of business success, whether it's you know traditional functional expertise in finance, accounting, marketing, supply chain management, um, and others, or it's uh, the ability to articulate your facility with with that expertise, that functional expertise, to 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 motivate the other folks in your company or other people in your uh, value chain to to behave in accordance with with how you would like the the business to be conducted. In all respects, those skills are still very valued. So obviously you mentioned finance and accounting, so maybe a few math skills wouldn't hurt as well um, in in terms of being able to go into business, being able to you know, engage and be able to read a spreadsheet or something like that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that um, having an understanding of the the financial underpinnings of is any business opportunity, whether it's at the conception stage when you're writing a business plan and trying to determine whether or not um, a, a market would pay a sufficient uh, price for the, the product or good that you're, you're providing such that you could cover your costs, or as you move that into production, as you move that into reality, making sure that what you have projected, what you've estimated is something that uh, is, is borne out in fact. Um, having a good facility with numbers and an attention to detail to manage uh, the resulting financial reality is is important. So you mentioned now just now management as well, and being able to manage projects. So in, on the management side, perhaps skills like personnel management or leadership might also be relevant in the field of international business? Oh, it is, um, as, as it is in, 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 in business writ large. Um, you know, the challenges are, are a bit different. Uh, even in my own personal experience, having been in a management role in an international environment, um, one in which I, I didn't have a great command of the, of, the, of the local language, you know, I had to actually work very hard to to recruit and and motivate and retain uh, 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 complementary leaders who could could uh, perform those um, translation uh, skills while still making sure that uh, sort of the strategic direction and the managerial priorities stayed intact. Um, but uh, but but ensuring that you have alignment uh, from some your vision, your management style, all the way to what um, may occur at the you know the production floor or may occur in the way a product gets marketed, um, you you have to be very comfortable working with, uh, with with additional people. So finally, then, what would you suggest students do if they want to pursue a career in international business or in business in general? Internships, perhaps, maybe exploring a little bit in this field in order to determine if this is the right field for them. Yeah, there's a few things that you should do. Um, fundamentally, since all business is international, uh, you have to, to, to really focus on having a, at least one core business skill set. And so we always recommend that a student have a, a traditional business background, say in accounting, say in finance. And if they want to pursue and layer on top of that, uh, exposure to international business from a curricular perspective, uh, then they will be better prepared to, uh, to to move throughout their career into increasing levels of responsibility in increasingly internationally intense in environments. Um, there, are, there are two pathways. The first is if, um, as, a, as a student, you uh, acquire not only that core business skill set, say finance, um, but also take advantage of international opportunities, perhaps studying abroad for a period of time. And while studying abroad, not only uh, going to class and maybe soaking up some of the cultural opportunities, but maybe taking it a step further, exploring an international internship in conjunction with your study abroad. That really, when it, when it upon graduation, that really gives you a leg up when you're making the case that even at a junior tenure in your career, uh, to an employer 
who you're, you are hoping will, will select you for employment in an international environment, you can say, not only do I have, say, the foundational business skill, not only do I uh, hopefully have the foundational um, language skill, not only have I um, been to the, uh, the environment in question and studied in that international context, but I've actually done some work in that international context. I know what it's like to conduct business there. And here's what I did, and here are the impacts, and here's how I've, in a way, de-risked the hiring decision for you, employer, and here's how I've previously demonstrated my commitment to a career in international business. That's one way. Um, you have to be very aggressive, and you have to be very purposeful to do that, but it can be done. The other way is to pursue, following graduation, uh, a position with a company that is, is largely international. It has a variety of uh, business units or other, other um, outlets across the globe. And as you work uh, through, through your career, uh, you can be very uh, open about volunteering uh, for international assignments, working with your supervisor, manager, perhaps an informal mentor to talk about your long-term aspirations to transition within, say, that company to an international business unit, for example. And in a way, that also allows the employer to de-risk their decision of sending you in uh, abroad because they know who you are, you have a track record within their company, you've proven yourself, and now they view it as an opportunity for them not only to, for you to add value to their company in international context, but they're now starting to think of you as a future leader of the company. And if you're going to lead a, a company, you have to be able to lead internationally. Again, all business is international these days. And um, if you have that exposure, then you will have the opportunity to move up into the senior levels of management because you, you, you've proven that you can conduct business in a very effective way, both domestically as well as abroad. So if one has experience in international business, what other opportunities might be opened because of that experience? Does it lead perhaps to other options uh, for students and then professionals that want to seek other careers beyond a career in business? You know, it, it, it does. Um, first of all, it, uh, it certainly makes you incredibly marketable across you know, all, all sorts of, of enterprises, both private and, and, and public. And, and what we, we see oftentimes are um, uh, even opportunities in public service being opened because if you've demonstrated a track record uh, in an international environment, if you've been able to operate um, under real-world cost and deadline const constraints, um, worked with people um, uh, unlike yourself toward productive ends, those are the types of, uh, of, of life and professional experiences that uh, even um, uh, places like the State Department really really value. And so if you're considering a long-term career in public service, if you have the opportunity to benefit from uh, a, a stop along the way in international business, you become very desirable to, um, to, to serving in a public fashion. Well, Dean Pullen, thank you so much for being with me today to talk about this career field. It's very, very helpful to our students. Thank you for you're your very, advice. You're very welcome. So students, there you have it. If you're interested in a career in international business, you might check out how some business courses might help you along the way in your field of international studies. See how they work together.